Hey guys, this is KSB with Tape, and today you join me for episode 17 of Solar Civilization. And we're returning the shuttle that I launched last episode. This was my first attempt at a shuttle. Um, well, the first attempt in this series. It's one of the ones I used to use. Um, but I'm figuring I want to upgrade it a little. I still like launching it like a normal shuttle, because that's what's kind of fun. Um, but, you know, I'll, I'll think about upgrading it, you know, bit by bit. But anyway, we need to bring the parry ups down, and I don't really know where to do it at this time, so I put it down kind of over that little peninsula. Um, it turns out it's actually best to, with Ferrum Aerospace from an orbit like this, to put it just over the uh, continent you're going to land on, um, just behind the uh, Kerbal Space Center. Uh, um, but I didn't know that now, but I have flown the shuttle time and time again now, actually. I'm using it in another save, I'm just playing by myself with Interstellar, because, uh, you know, Interstellar's kind of fun. Um, but it would be kind of ridiculous to incorporate it now, and uh, you know, uh, th like some of the things that Interstellar has, like um, uh, like I, I don't know what plasma drives and things. Um, those only really work with beamed power, so you need to set up a big beamed power network, like Interstellar Quest, and that seems to take a long time, and I'd have to learn how to do it, and that sounds no fun. Anyway, um, we should probably uh return this. Uh, this is much hardier than the Icarus Mark 1, which was that little SSTO which had filling Kerman in it and kind of exploded. Um, it kind of tore apart on re-entry, but this is much hardier and sturdier. Um, shame, really. We did lose filling Kerman. It would be nice to have an abort system. I'm thinking of using the Vanguard abort system because uh, I, don't, I don't like losing Kerbals. It's like, ah, damn, I lost a Kerbal. And usually I pick the ones with cool names, so it sucks. But, you know, at least we can, you know, Phil Kerman died doing what he loved. It, being engulfed in flames as his aircraft tore apart and slammed into the ground. Yeah. Anyway, um, we're starting to pick up some serious flames way away from the space center, so I helplessly ignite the RCS, doing pretty much nothing. Um, so I decided to see just basically where I can, you know, where I can put it down. Um, as long, I kind of aim to keep the... Uh, it pointing just at the top of the velocity vector, so it doesn't stall, um, but it gets kind of maximum lift. I bring up this far flight data, not that I really know what any of it means, but I thought it might help me somehow. And I really want to keep the um, side slip angle down, because that's what really causes um, things to tear apart uh, on re-entry, and pitch angle actually. I did have this thing with basically the same shuttle once, where it would just randomly spin, but it was a glitch. so. Uh, there wasn't really much I could do, although I did actually rescue the Kerbals from that. Uh, yeah, it's kind of burning up white hot now, it looks really cool. I do like watching planes uh, return from orbit, or, well, shuttles, or maybe, well, maybe eventually when I get um, a space plane, a proper space plane working, which I have pretty much done a billion times, so that should be fine. Um, but yeah, we're coming down way too low, so if we try and make the runway, we could probably get pretty far, but we'd probably just hit the mountains, and I don't want to do that. So I'm going to wait till my uh, Mach number has dropped off. I want to be going below Mark 1 before I kind of start doing maneuvers, or it'll be all, you know, tarry a party. <laughs> but uh, yeah, so I'm going to find a flat piece of land, although this is kind of hilly and lakey. It's kind of like lake country, or whatever you'd call it. Um, but yeah. Let's just kind of uh, feather it and do my weird thing where I jitter to try and keep it straight. I'm not brilliant at flying aircraft on uh, games. I'm no aeronautical whatever. Aeronautical? I don't know what that would be. Uh, probably an aeronautical expert. Or a pilot would be the word that most people would use. But pff, most people are boring. Um, yeah, so let's just kind of bring this down. And I want to obviously be going as slow as possible, but I could flare right now, but then my vertical velocity would get really high, and you don't want to have a really high vertical velocity, because then you hit the ground really hard, but at the same time you don't really want to have too high a horizontal velocity, especially on bumpy ground, or you'll get this thing where you bump and die. And we don't want to lose Fred Burton Gene Rod, because at least Gene Rod's pretty cool, I mean he was the geologist on a couple of missions, he's a, he's a good guy, he's good people. Um, so yeah, we're going to try and feather this back. It looks kind of good and we'll be absolutely fine landing on a runway. But the problem really is those uh, wheel bays are really close together. Those That doesn't give me much uh, margin for error. I have to land perfectly flat on a bumpy surface. So um, in future I'll widen that. Uh, this is, I think I, think I named this shuttle Ares, but I will upgrade it at some point. Um, 
yeah, I know. I'm using the RCS to give a little more, a um, little more torque, uh, so I can just really lift the nose and flare off all of my velocity. Because uh, it would be ideal if I could flare off all of it and just kind of touch down. But that's probably not going to happen. But I still have about 220 meters to fall. You can see that in the service information of Metgem. Um, but yeah, we just keep firing those RCS things. I do, do also need to rebounce the RCS. So uh, yeah, but we're coming down quite nicely now. Um, this is obviously slowed down to one times time accelerate, so it, you can see what kind of my process of I've got to not die. I also would like to put air brakes on it, but it'd be nine one. But anyway, we touch down, it looks good, and then it flips, and it is all destroyed, and we lose Gene Rod and Fred, but how will we ever recover from this? Well, uh, let's go to Eve. Um, you know, let's just forget about it, just go to Eve, just have some drinks on the evil death beach of Eve where you would die, and then uh, just forget about it. So yeah, this is the lab for an Eve spacecraft. Um, it is, well, and the habitation module, and probably life support, if I remember correctly being launched obviously on the Triton 1, my reusable rocket, um, well reusable bottom stage, and I'm very pre pleased about how I reused it this time, uh, I, now I just need to get the top stage to be reusable, um, that'll be difficult-ish, I'm just going to drink some of my coffee because I'm a little worried it'll go cold, alright, we've detached the top stage and now we're just going to almost hit it with the bottom stage, but no, we need to redirect where this is going and it's more efficient to do it now and I'd quite like to have some fuel left for landing. Um, so we switch back to the top stage and just put it in an orbit and because I've already done the um, a, the redirect of the main stage I can take a little more time to put this in orbit but you know I don't want to spend too much time and um, you know come back to the spacecraft uh, to the main stage way too late but anyway that is in orbit now um, and this needs to land uh, so yeah it's looking pretty good, like we're going to come down roughly the right place. But I do want to just take a quick precaution and burn slightly more of my fuel so I get a definite not hitting the ocean because, uh, because well, hitting the ocean is kind of deadly. Because as we all know, water is deadly in Kerbal Space Program. It is the most deadly substance there is, other than, like, asteroid. It's pretty deadly. Actually, no, because you can touch asteroid much faster than you touch water. It's just programmer coding, not slowing down, still breaking error. That's how I'd explain it. Um, but anyway, we burned quite a bit more of our fuel, but still have a bit left. So I am actually going to attempt a propulsive and parachute landing. Eventually, I'd like to have enough fuel to um, uh, just propulsively land. I'm thinking I might use um, a stretchy tank for that. I don't really want to use stretchy tanks too much in this series because it doesn't really look like Kerbal Space Program. Um, but I do like quite like stretchy tanks. I use them in my other series, but that's necessary because, uh, well, rescale curb, and you need to be more accurate with your things. So let's just time warp down. Hope that this doesn't burn up as it has a few times. But uh, usually we get about three flights of it out of this, and then I screw it up. But it looks like we might come down on that little beach where we came down the first time, um, which would be nice. It'll be like, oh hey, this is where I've been before, and then we'll get the navy to go and pick it up. I might do some more uh, military type things because they're always fun, um, you know, putting missiles on planes and saying the military's paying us or something. I'm going to have a little more coffee while this burns up. Yeah, that's um, terrible actually. It's awful. It's a really bad brand of instant coffee. I've forgotten what it was. Um, but anyway, let's let's just burn up and just, you know, well not burn up, let's try and not burn up. And I have to keep adjusting attitude because these parachutes keep over bloody heating. Over bloody heating? Just bloody overheating. Anyway, <laughs> we'll just uh, lose another parachute and we'll land on four, but we have fuel, so we can touch down much softer than usual and maybe not even break landing legs, which would be even better. The engineers will be incredibly happy. And the government will actually be like, oh, you can do this. That'll be great. Anyway, let's just ignite that above Mark 1, really tearing apart the space, well not tearing apart, but really stressing on the spacecraft and the parachute. I did a quick test fire of my engines there, that looks pretty good. I'll deploy the landing legs high just so I don't screw up, and yeah, it does look like we're coming down on that beach, which is nice. Um, just yeah, keep decelerating a bit. Um, get my surface information over, so open so I know exactly how high I am, so I can burn at the right time. Uh, but it looks like we're coming down pretty fast, so I am going to want to ignite those engines. Um, 
Yeah, it's looking pretty good, but maybe slow down. Oh, the parachutes haven't even opened yet. There you go. Um, <clears throat> but now I should probably wait a little while before igniting the engines, or I'll burn up all of my fuel, and it will have all been for nothing. But yeah, this is uh, looking pretty good. Just a quick test fire there. Um, and this is back into one times time accelerate, I think. I tend to chop between, as I always say. I just kind of switch between, and it's probably pretty obvious, actually. I don't really know. I'm only half paying attention. <laughs> Which is good, because I'm commentating. Um, but anyway, we're pretty close to the ground now, so we are going to want to ignite our engines and uh, just land nicely. Um, yeah, it's slower than we usually do, but I can throttle up a little more. And touchdown, that's pretty nice. Almost fall over, but the landing legs hold me in place. And uh, yeah, we reuse that stage. So I'll recover that and attempt to finish my coffee. I think at this point, I spent so long hovering over the recover thing because I was going, yeah, fuck yeah, I nailed it. But anyway, because um, I'm really lame. Uh, <laughs> but yeah, let's just uh, put this in a slightly better orbit, I think. Um, is what I was going for, just more circular, because it was in a bit of a skew if orbit actually, um, annoyingly. But anyway, let's uh, yeah, just turn it. You can see now that it's uh, the standard lab with a habitation module, uh, life support, uh, reaction wheel, and some um, docking ports. Obviously, I still haven't unlocked big docking ports, which is ridiculous. Um, I haven't been going through the tech tree brilliantly fast actually. I've just been preparing missions. At some point there's going to be a huge influx of science and it'll just be like finished. But for now, yeah. Oh no, overburned there. God damn it, I suck. But there is RCS on this for the meantime. Um, so I can just use that because, you know, that's easier. And who wants to... Oh, and I almost hit the uh, upper stage um, really sedately. But in space you don't want to hit your um, things because, I mean, you hit an engine it's probably pretty screwed. You'll wreck some of the lining or something. I'm actually going to finish the coffee this time. Nailed it. But yeah, I should really stop, um, I should, should really stop drinking during videos. But, uh, it's fine. Anyway, that is, uh, circularized-ish. Um, and that's all we need-ish. Um, yeah, but that's pretty good. So in a week we'll have another launch for, uh, for the next part. Probably the drive section or maybe the, uh, core. I have to put the core, which is the crew module slash command module slash return module um, on it first um, before I can put any probes on, because I'm not going to land on EVE. Um, well, I'm going to land probes on EVE, I'm not going to land people on EVE, but I am going to land on Gilly. I've brought a little lander, and I'm just going to rename that so it doesn't get all confused. And rename this, because I never rename my crafts properly. Um, I've called this EVE Explorer, because that's what I tend to call my uh, crafts when I don't have a name for them, I'd call them wherever they're going, plus Explorer, but if anyone has a name for it that I'd like, then please suggest it, that'd be awesome, um, and I might pick it. But anyway, now we have a sh another shuttle launch, this is upgraded, this is not my most advanced shuttle, because in my personal save I'm a little further along, um, so I have a slightly better shuttle, but this has air brakes, it has a slightly modified wing set, it has wider wheel bases, it has an abort system, I can pull the crew out at any time. Um, and it, oh, it doesn't actually have the, uh, and it doesn't have rebalanced RCS at this time, and it doesn't have any backup um, uh, solar cells on the on the back, the ones that don't articulate, so I get um, sun all the time, even while in atmosphere. But you know, um, we'll, we'll we'll live. And I've also um, redone the fuel line so it burns from the middle tank, so it burns from the outer tanks first and stays more balanced. That's how I do them, and I don't have to transfer fuel as much. Pretty much never, I just occasionally turn the flow off from one tank or whatever and just kind of try and keep it balanced, um, because it's easier that way. But this has been sped up and it does look pretty nice. I am going to the Prospector Station, that is my uh, little research station in orbit. Um, this wasn't a brilliant transfer, so I'm going to do a couple of orbits to catch up with it, I think. Um, or maybe not. What did I do? I've completely forgotten. I think I did a couple of orbits. Um, but uh, yeah, so I'll just burn down and just kind of get myself in a roughly similar orbit. I am ahead of it, so I need to be going slower. But anyway, we'll ditch that. We don't need the uh, liquid fuel anymore. We need to switch to RCS power. Um, because it's just reasons. <laughs> and I'm just going to quickly uh, try and finagle myself an encounter, but that didn't really work. So I'll try burning on the other side, I think. 
that would be a good idea. Um, or will it? I, I, I did this yesterday, I've completely forgotten what I did, so, you know. Um, I think if I actually do that and then just leave it for a little while, it works out better. Um, and I think I figured that out at some point. I think I also need to do an inclination change. I think the uh, prospector station is slightly off equator, which is a little annoying. Or maybe the shuttle is slightly off equator. Um, yeah, I'm trying to. I'm trying to figure out. I'm trying to put this in my head. Where what I actually did. It's weird. I did it yesterday. But oh yeah, yeah. That's what I. I this is the shuttle launch I'm thinking of. I was thinking maybe I did another one. Basically, if I make this burn now and change my inclination and move myself into an intersect and wait maybe a couple more orbits, I'll drift into the right place. Because when you actually dock a spacecraft in real life, you don't do what I usually do and just burn at your target. You kind of put your orbits. You would launch kind of behind, say, the International Space Station um, in a slightly uh, eccentric orbit where it crosses over um, the orbit in another place um, uh, and then you'd... Uh, what was it? Yeah, and then, and then you'd kind of do a few orbits and slowly burn so your um, orbit is basically the same as the station until you come in nice and slowly so that you don't accidentally smash into it. And now I'm just quickly fine-tuning it so that I'll be in the right place two orbits from now because it's uh, more fun to do it that way. My uh, ex explanation of orbital rendezvous was probably really terrible just then, but whatever, who cares. Um, and we get our closest approach yet, that's 20 kilometers, but that's not close enough for me. But if we do another orbit, we'll get about 1.2 kilometers, I think. And we get some weird camera shots there. And, uh, all of that fun stuff. Yeah, 1.3 kilometers, that's pretty good. Uh, but yeah, so let's just kind of slow down, because we're using RCS with a pretty big craft, and this is bringing a docking adapter the, to the station. Um, I'm thinking this docking adapter is just going to be for spacecraft, and especially for shuttles, because it fits in the cargo bay of the shuttle, it means I can use the in the uh, what is it, the docking port inside the cargo bay for docking to the station because obviously if this del is delivering it, it can dock on it again. Uh, it'll probably become more apparent in a bit. But yeah, I'm just slowing down and moving my intersect together because that's pretty much the best way to do it. Um, but yeah, there's Prospector right there. Um, and we just need to kind of slow down now and push our, push our orbit so we come a little bit closer. But we don't want to... Uh, be gunning right for it and then something go wrong and then we tear off a bit of it and lose the shuttle and get a whole gravity situation. Although gravity, okay, great film, yeah, I enjoyed it, however they're fixing the Hubble telescope at about an orbit of about 200 kilometers, um, which yeah that's obviously fine, you'd do that with shuttle, that was a real mission, and then they're like oh well there's a hundred kilometers out is um, the International Space Station, which orbits at 400 kilometers, so they just fly over there, and then they're like, oh, a Chinese station is right near us, in line of sight. Why would that happen? Why would all those things be so well aligned? God, Jesus. But anyway, we need to move this um, to the other docking adapter. That docking adapter will be used for uh, constructing more station. I do want to make this bigger. Um, I'm not sure exactly what I want to put on it now, well, well in the future, but uh, at some point I will, uh, no doubt. Um, so I'm just going to move this quite nicely down to that docking port um, for future use so I can put the shuttle on the other end and uh, have a nice place to dock shuttle. But anyway, that went quite well. Um, this is still at four times time accelerate because this took a little while, but I will slow it down because this is one of my most proud dockings. I make uh, a maneuver so I kind of slip underneath it. I was trying to do this thing where you don't fire your RCS at the station too much. It doesn't go great, but I do this kind of weird kind of like handbrake turn thing. I've slowed it down now and you can see I just kind of come right underneath it on a turn and it's just, I just really like this maneuver. Um, I'll call it the old switcheroo because that's what I call all of my maneuvers. Um, and all of my operations in a, in um what is it, total war. It's always Operation Clusterfuck because it's about just murdering all of your enemies. Anyway, you can actually see in there the uh, little gr that little yellow box illuminated by green right now. That's an abort system, so they can be thrown out and parachute and stuff. So everything will be fine. But anyway, let's uh, just move on to this. And it, see, it's kind of slipped around the side, and I just need to make a quick burn to push me backwards. And I'm a little off to the side, but I can fix that. I was just quite <laughs> proud of this docking. It just looked kind of nice. Um, but now it's just back to normal docking, really. It was just the approach that looked cool. Um, but yeah, let's just kind of 
move in gracefully, illuminated by green. And we need to move to the side. I need to figure that out. And then I completely unfigure out the controls and screw up the grace of this docking by bumping the docking port with my door. That was bad. Ah. And this is being flown by Luke. I completely forgot my Luke Skywalker Kerman. Um, I might rename his uh, rename him in the save as Luke Skywalker. <laughs> because, you know, who doesn't want Luke Skywalker on their team? Um, as we all know, Luke Skywalker was a shuttle pilot. But anyway, that is on. And uh, I don't think there's much left in this episode other than watching that slowly dock. But yeah, that will mean shuttle can now service the station in one way or another. I'm not sure how much payload it could bring now considering uh, um, that that docking adapter takes up most of the space but maybe I'll figure out a best, better solution or figure out how to put an inline docking port on the shuttle but anyway as that slowly docks together it is time for me to say um, I hope you've enjoyed this episode this has been KSP with Tape I will see you next time